Hi. Hi, Juliana. How are you? I'm good. Sorry about that. My last Zoom went long. It's a day of, <laughs> of uh, Zoom. Sorry. <laughs> no worries whatsoever. I'm so excited to chat with you. Huge fan of your work for years going back to ER. I love that. Oh, thank you, you so ER. much. Um, and you're great on the morning show. I was wondering how did this role come about and were you a fan of the show too before uh, coming on to it? I was. I was a fan of the show. Um, and it came about, you know, we were in the middle of a lockdown, in the middle of the pandemic, and I was upstate with my family uh, cooking dinner when the phone rang and my agent said, they just offered you this incredible part on the morning show. Um, you should read it. I think it's really good. <laughs> so um, I read it and I, I just fell in love with her. And I said, oh my God, okay, I'm going to get on an airplane for the first time in a year in the middle of a pandemic and go play this character. And I, I have not regretted it at all. It was really, um, I think it was a really well-written part. It was a fun part to play and a really um, embracing cast to go into. I, it was a little bit like coming home for me because Mimi Leader, I had worked with on ER for six years and Leslie Lincoln Glatter, I'd worked on ER and the good wife. And she was the first director for my first episode when you first meet Laura. So I it also felt very familiar in a strange way. Um, and of course, you know, I've known Jen and Reese for years. So it, it and, and, and Billy Crudup and, you know, it, it was like a big family. So for me, it was um, a nice way to stop just cooking and cleaning and panicking about the pandemic. Um, it was a real luxury. That's great. Yeah, I love your character on the show. And I'll admit when I was watching uh, the first, uh, your first episode you're in with, with Bradley and, and Nerese Witherspoon, and I had no idea they were going to get together. So when that happened, I was shocked. <laughs> and um, I even wondered if Bradley uh, might be doing it to get info on Laura since Alex had warned her about her. And I, I was wondering, do you think that Laura is at all leery of Bradley when they kiss in the limo? Uh, I don't think she's leery of her. I think I think Laura I think Laura really understands who Bradley is pretty early on, um, and I think that Laura knows that Alex, uh, the side of Alex that can be um, incredibly competitive and um, twist things around to get her way, and I think she sees Bradley as sort of this. Um, diamond in the rough, I would say, um, who has been guided possibly by people who have the wrong motives. So I, I sort of, um, I think Laura was really pleasantly surprised at Bradley's tenacious way of interviewing and um, just her being. When she kisses her in the car, I, I don't think for a minute that Laura um, doesn't realize she's doing that so that she doesn't have to answer the question. I think I think she knows the second Bradley leans in to kiss her, Laura's like, oh, she was never vetted for this job. You know, Laura's too yeah. smart for that. On the other hand, I think Laura really, uh, we actually worked, worked on that scene because um, Reese rightfully said, she said, you know, as a producer of the show, it's weird that this is a show about the Me Too movement and my character just leans in and kisses yeah. her. You know, yeah. just because they're the same sex, is that okay? And, um, and I thought, oh my God, that's a really, really good yeah. point. Like, you're right. So then, so then we, we rehearsed it and I said, well, it is okay if my character then leans right back in right, yeah, and kisses you back. That way we're actually, con we're consenting in the moment. Um, but thank God Reese said that because had she just, you know, leaned in to kiss me, um, and then we both, the scene ends and we're both staring at each other that would have brought in, that would have opened up a whole new can of worms, which is, you yeah. know, what about the Me Too movement? What about, you know, unconsent, consent, consensual touching and kissing and all of that. So, um, I think it was a pleasant surprise for Laura, um, that she enjoyed it so much. And then she, you know, she's obviously someone who, um, is very flirtatious and loves, Let's love sex and loves yeah. um, relationships, you know, with God knows who. And so when, when Bradley does that, I think it's exciting for Laura. It's like, oh, what else you got going, little girl? 
Let's yeah. see. Let's see. Let's see if you can play in my arena. And then it starts to get serious, and she realizes a how beautiful Bradley is, and what a damaged soul she yeah. is. Um, yeah. But I also think what what will be interesting in season three, hopefully, um, will be you can only you have to have a yin yang in every relationship, right? So Laura can't just be her mentor. That's, yeah. that's going to lose its appeal, you know, a couple months in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah. I, I was thinking about how there's probably a purity to Bradley and that she hasn't been totally warped by network television yet. So she's kind of coming up from a different, um, you know, aspect of, and I, I wonder if Laura's drawn to that too, that like, oh, you haven't been too damaged by this yet. Yeah, um, and, but yeah. I also think, I think for Bradley, I think when Laura says to Bradley, you know, I don't think they're using you to your full potential. Yeah. You're better than that. That's, that's a journalist that Bradley has looked up to probably since she was a yeah. little girl, you know, yeah. there's a 10 year age difference between them. Um, and, and Bradley wants to be that kind of a journalist. So when someone like Laura says to her, you're really good. Yeah. It's someone else seeing Bradley through their eyes. She's only been sort of identifying with how Alex and Corey see her. Yeah. Not how someone of Laura's stature sees her. And I think it, it, it changes the dynamic, not just, um, with her relationship to Laura, but her Bradley's relationship to Alex and Corey, right? She's suddenly yeah. getting more confident. And I think that um, that had to happen in season two because otherwise um, Bradley stays stuck in a rut, you know? And Laura sort yeah. of becomes this person who just pushes her out of her rut and, and gets her on her way. But then what happens to the relationship? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you about, you know, they have a talk about labels at one point and Laura finds it interesting that Bradley is still seen as a straight white woman at work. And I was wondering, why do you think that matters to Laura? Is that kind of like maybe an age difference in, in that like labels did matter more when she was coming out? Yeah, I think a lot has happened since Laura was outed. Yeah. Um, and you see it in the reaction when Bradley is outed. Yeah. Um, it's just talk. It's not yeah. going to, it can't cost you your job because then there'll be lawsuits. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Like at least we've come that far, but I think what's so important in the show is when you see that last scene between me and Al, between Laura and Alex um, and Alex says, you know, why don't you like me? Yeah. I love the speech that Laura gives to Alex, which is, you know, what you thought was just gossip derailed my life. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and I, and I hope people watching it understand the power of words. Mm -hmm. Words are really hurtful. You know, Laura ended up benefiting from it ultimately, but I'm sure she went through a hell of a lot before then, but words matter. Yeah. And let's not be so flippant, you know, just for yeah. what, for gossip. I mean, I, I, I found myself being like, God, do I ever do that at a dinner party where I'm like, Oh, did you hear about blah, blah, blah. Right. Just to get, you know, just to, just to be funny or have a moment at a dinner party mm -hmm. when you don't realize that that might actually really affect someone's life in a negative way, you know, to be yeah. thoughtful before you speak. So I, I loved, I loved how they wrote that and how they played that. I thought it was really um, smart. The writing's just so smart. Yeah. I love it. It's so ballsy too. I always say this is the ballsiest show on television. Like they just do whatever they like. They they do things that other shows are kind of afraid to do. I feel like, and I really respect that. Yeah, there's um, a freedom. Yeah. There's I think there's a real freedom to to the streaming shows yeah. where they don't have to adhere to advertising. Yeah. Yes, that's true. I love that Laura's first move as a temporary co-host is to say no to the Groucho Marx glasses <laughs> in honor of his birthday. I was thinking, what does that say about her? Do you think she's kind of like an old school, like no nonsense journalist that like maybe sees the morning television as, you know, not beneath her, but just kind of silly a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think I think she worked so hard to get back to real journalism after she got fired from the morning show 
years before from a different network. And um, I think for her, the idea of going back was a favor she was doing for, for Bradley because it would be yeah. fun to work together. But where she draws the line is stupidity. And, yeah. and she's not being, paid. she's doing, she's doing the network a favor by showing up on the morning show. Yeah. She knows she doesn't have to do any of that silliness. Um, I think when you cut to her washing her hands with Alex, it's, it's also more the way I saw it playing her was we are in a really critical moment in our world glo- globally as, as a global <laughs> pandemic is, is um, killing people showing someone how to wash hands it's it, it's actually okay but putting on Groucho Marx glasses and then reading the news with the glasses on is just like that's just you know a bridge too far it's just not yeah. gonna go there that's I actually wanted to ask you but I love the scenes with you and Jennifer Aniston like the washing man because you guys have such a great chemistry and you can see there was a genuine friendship there um do you think this is a betrayal then that Laura has just never gotten over and, and could she ever get over I actually think she's over it. Yeah. Um, I think it's not about her holding a grudge. It's about her um, not having the time for that kind of friendship. Because if if those are your friends, God, who's who are your enemies, right? If yeah. someone can be that flippant and then not even realize their mistake and apologize yeah. once you've been fired, yeah. that's not someone you want to hang out with. Life's too short. And she says that a lot, you know? She says it um, to Bradley a lot, like, you know, I don't want the chaos, the chaos that she talks about chaos a lot. And someone like Alex, for her, her life is rich and she has created her own life. She doesn't need Alex's approval, disapproval, friendship to know who she is. So why would she go there until Alex comes to her? And what was lovely about, I think, the end of season two was that Alex has this come to Jesus moment where she, the same way Laura had to say, okay, yeah, I am, I'm gay. When she gets outed, Alex then at the end says, yeah, I slept with Mitch. Yeah. And it's this huge weight lifted off. Like, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. Assuming everyone's going to leave it. And then when they don't, you go, oh, well, now I don't have to carry this huge weight of a lie. And now I can actually get on with my life. Yeah. How amazing is that? You know, so in a strange way, they really did mirror each other. That the the Alex yeah. and Laura um, uh, characters, you know, years apart. But I think for Alex, who finally sort of, I don't want to say was, you know, was sort of, you know, fell down from her glory, but she was confronted with it. And for her to choose to tell the truth rather than keep lying about it actually means she has a chance to survive the way Laura did. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's great. I never thought about it that way. Um, I just have one last question. I, you know, you're, you kind of leave it up in the air with the finale of what's going to happen with Laura and and Bradley. Um, But I was thinking about like, what do you think well, what do you think that Bradley fulfills in Laura? I was kind of surprised that she took her so seriously that like, you know, she really wants to have a serious relationship with her. Yeah. And I mean, I was too. (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, here's what I'll say. Um, I think that Laura, um, you know, you see in the beginning when she's just like enough, like when, when Bradley breaks her vase, you know, and goes storming out, Laura's like, I'm done. This is, childish, ridiculous behavior. But then when there's this moment and you see the vulnerability in Bradley and this damaged flower, she's just so damaged. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and then when, when Laura sees what she's dealing with, with her brother and what her brother reveals about her father, um, I think a lot of it resonates with Laura because Laura comes from a family that was very liberal and this is this this was part of the the luxury of working on the morning show because Carrie Aaron um, gave me a twenty year history of Laura, and so when Laura really? came out, yeah, which is really unheard of. Yeah, um, <laughs> when Laura came out, Laura's a very well thought out character on the show. Um, when Laura came out to her very liberal parents when she was outed, 
her parents were not accepting of it. And so she is, so when she says, the audience didn't know this, but when she says to Bradley's, I've had to walk away from people in my family, she, she experienced the same thing on a different level, mm -hmm. right? But she had to walk away from her very educated liberal parents when she said, guys, I'm gay. Um, they had a very hard time with that. I want to explore, I would love to in season three, just explore a little bit of what really happened there and, and how her parents reacted. Because I also think it's a very, very, very important topic in today's world with the young LGBTQ community who some of them in Florida are being forced to tell their parents yeah. for the world to see what it means for a child who has a different sexual identity than what their parents want for them to not be accepted, to be kicked out of their home. You know, with Laura, it was different. She was already an adult, so she could figure it out. Yeah. She went to therapy. She said, that's it. You're not in my life anymore. I'm going to figure out my life. She was an adult. But a, a child, a teenager who's still trying to figure out who they are, all they need is the love around them to help them get through. That's really all they need. Yeah. They certainly don't need to be kicked out of their home or to be looked on. You think that they're not judging themselves enough for, for, for how they may feel inadequate or whatever it yes, is. Right. Have a parent do that. And I would love, so love for the show to to talk about that because I, I, just from the response I get from so many young LGBTQ um, people on the street, just walking my dog at night, it's so <laughs> gratifying when they say, finally, someone who represents me, not as a caricature. Right. Yeah. Cause you're not that at all. Yeah. Laura's not. Laura's 100% no. comfortable with who mm -hmm. she is. She is. And, and and if you have a problem with it, that's your problem. That's not her problem. And I think that there's a, there's a generation coming up who, you know, I've noticed it's been so interesting because I've been finally being able to go on some book tours um, with my book that came out in the middle of the pandemic and I couldn't, you know, show up in person. And usually my demographic from, you know, The Good Wife and ER is sort of, you know, mostly women from, you know, 40 to 80. Not anymore. Because of Laura Peterson, it's 18 to 80. Wow. And there are these young girls that come up to me at these events and they have tears in their eyes because they haven't felt that they were represented properly. Wow. Um, and, and Laura is someone they aspire to, right? To be, to, to embrace who she is, to succeed the way she did and to not take any crap for it. She's unapologetically gay. Yeah. And wow. I am so glad that I was given the opportunity to play someone that, that represents them in a way that's positive um, because there's just not enough of it. So I think if we could somehow make her history of what her parents were, and these are, it's one thing when you talk about right wing or very Catholic or, you know, um, people who are, who are, you know, anti-abortion and anti-women and anti all of that. It's that's one thing, but liberal parents that don't yeah, accept right. a child. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting. Yeah, topic. that is really interesting. Um, and I, I feel like we could dive a little deeper into that. So anyway, yeah. I'm, I'm, I go off, but I do because I see how important it is um, to the younger generation coming up to play such a positive gay character. And it makes me happy that, um, that they write for Laura with such respect, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's a, she's a great character. And, and you, it comes across too, that she's so strong and, and has gone through things without getting that backstory actually. So that's a tribute to your performance too. Oh, thank you. Writing, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you and oh, I likewise. can't wait to see what happens next. So oh, me too. You and me both. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>